November 1962, 50 years ago, Henry Bellman became the first Republican to be elected governor of Oklahoma. And while he would go on to serve in Congress and later return to the governor's office, he was more than a politician. Henry Bellman was one of us, a friend, a farmer, and an Oklahoman who wanted the best for his state. Remembering Henry Bellman, a subseries of the Spotlighting Oklahoma Oral History Project, seeks to complete his story through the voices of those closest to him, from his three daughters to those who worked with him and for him during his career. And, you know, he was really the most honest man I ever met. And he always said what he did. And his legacy will be not what he accomplished, not any of his political views, whether conservative or liberal, or busing votes or integration or anything like that, but was how he went about governing and making decisions. And I think back today, you know, there aren't many people in political life, and I don't, there are people I respect, those I don't, we're all like that, but I thought, you know what this country needs is more people like Henry Bellman, who had the political courage and will to do what they think is right. Yes, they represented a constituency and all of that. But I don't see very many people out there that have political courage, and the country needs that. We could talk about it. We're in dire straits on the national level. And people don't have the political will and courage to make the decisions and do what needs to be done. What this country needs is a United States Senate full of Henry Bellman's. Mm -hmm. And what this country needs are politicians that are willing to stand up and be counted, not when it's popular, but when it's the right thing to do. And that's his legacy, how he did it. And the fact was, he was a, uh, a great example of a man of great character to all kinds of people. So that's his legacy. The other unique thing, and I'll just throw it in here, about Henry Bellman through all these times, uh, he, you didn't ever want to work for anyone else. I mean, <laughs> of course, everybody had to sooner or later go and work for another boss, but he was without doubt the best boss you could ever imagine. As a matter of fact, being as young as I was and not having had a lot of experience, I didn't realize that all people <laughs> were not as good as Henry Bellman to their staff. Uh, I mean, he always wrote you personal notes if he saw something that you'd done uh, that, uh, you know, was maybe a little extra or, or just noticed things. Uh, uh, he and Shirley always uh, uh, thought, you know, something creative uh, to give to her gifts at Christmas, uh, something from their hearts that uh, were just, you know, really, really thoughtful. This happened with every staff, and I worked with the first staff and some of the staffs in Washington, and then the last staff, too. And there were different people along the way, always. Uh, but, I mean, every one of them had that feeling about him. And uh, not that he did anything special to... Uh, uh, he was just who he was. He had an element of creativity that I, I can't even begin to explain to you um, how his mind worked and how his thought process was took in today, but it also looked forward, not till the end of the week or the end of the month, but he saw things that and had visions of things. And vision is vision is probably a better word than being creative. He had vision. He had vision for his family. He had vision for Oklahoma. He had vision for the country. Um, he had vision for peace in the world. Um, he had vision for uh, the need to share food, to share natural resources, to share uh, uh, you know, clean air and clean water, uh, uh, and, and and so the, those two elements, I think, probably in my mind, kind of capture uh, what he really was all about. And uh, uh, he was a great guy to work for, but he was he was a better guy to work with. He was definitely motivated by something deep inside him. 
and um, loved ideas. It was very creative thinker. Um, loved working with people and figuring things out and trying to make them go and was really dedicated or committed to improving the, the world. I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but I think that's what drove him. It wasn't, I mean, he never complained of being tired or any of that sort of thing, but he was a pretty placid, low-key person. Um, so I think it was his, 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 I think he was deeply affected by his mother, he would say that, who was um, a school teacher uh, in a one-room schoolhouse out here in the country and would, he admired her a lot. She would go to school at five in the morning and light the stove and put on a kettle of soup for the kids and um, I think he was deeply impacted by her sense of justice and care. Um, he was not a bleeding heart liberal in any sense of the word, he, but he was, well, yeah, no, but he was, I don't know, there was something very deep inside him that wanted to make the world a better place and did it every chance he got. And his creativity, I mean, he was always, he was always trying, suggesting things for somebody to do or, have you thought about this or, I heard about this and that could work here. Or, he was, uh, it was I mean, it, maybe partly it was just an intellectual exercise. He really got charged by thinking about things and trying to make them work. You could view more from the Remembering Henry Bellman interview series by visiting www.library.okstate.edu slash oral history slash Bellman.